Like I said earlier, you know, we can't really see sound travel through air, but we can see sound travel through lightweight materials like um, styrofoam. One thing that we really wanted to test out was a, um, called a Rubens tube. And what that is is a pipe like this, but it's got a bunch of holes drilled in the top, and you couple a propane tank to it, oh, wow. and you light it on fire. Oh, yes. But then you couple They wouldn't the, let us play with fire. Right, so. right. Yeah, so that's not real safe for indoor displays and for kids yeah. and things yeah. of that nature. But you couple a um, acoustically transparent diaphragm to the end of the tube. You cap the other end off. Okay. And basically it works exactly like this, but it just does it with gas because gas is heavy and it sinks. Okay. So as you play information into that acoustically transparent diaphragm, it sends a wave through the gas and then the gas changes wow. in height. And so your flames change in height. Yeah. And so you're able to see basically it's like a flame kind of like spectrum analyzer, hey, for example. There's a you guy know? here in Oklahoma that builds fire pits mm -hmm. with our speakers in them and it modulates the flames as it's playing the music. That's probably that's, yep. exactly yep. what they yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah oh, you can use a speaker cool. also. It doesn't have to be an acoustically transparent uh, parent material. Sure. But the cool thing about that is, is you can like play an instrument into it. Oh, if it's just wow. like a balloon or something yeah. stretched over the end. Yeah. And it's not just a speaker playing music that way. Cool. So anyway, let's see if this thing is still fired up and hopefully my Bluetooth connection didn't time out or anything. And okay, so this is called a Kuntz tube, K-U-N-D-T-S, if you want to look it up. It's called a Kuntz tube. I guess that's probably the dude's last name that came up with it. <laughs> yeah, we didn't um, know how to pronounce it. I don't, I don't know. A lot of people also call it a resonance tube. And we happen to find that this, the resonance of this particular tube, which is little less than seven inches in diameter and five feet long, seven, it's a seven inch OD, and it's probably a little less than an eighth inch thick. Uh, five feet long, it's 110 hertz. So let's go ahead and play a little bit of 110 hertz through here. Wow. And see what it does. Let's give it a little bit more volume. So, just like we were seeing nodes and anti nodes on the string, on the spring, and all of that stuff, you're seeing them right here in this tube at 110 hertz. So the high parts are your anti nodes and the low spots are gonna be your nodes. And I believe Steven's getting ready to move in here with a close-up shot. I know with that lighting change that you guys just did definitely helped. <laughs> but let's see if we can uh, get a better image for you guys. That is mesmerizing to and It gals. really is. My gosh. Yeah, this has been another one that we've been really, I've just pretty much left hooked up and anybody that's yeah. come back to the shop has wow. checked it out. So, pretty cool stuff there. Uh, I'm gonna crank it up so you guys can see what it does with high amplitude. <laughs> so you're still, you still have your uh, nodes and anti-nodes, stuff is just going really crazy. It's like driving in a snowstorm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's one thing that's really cool. I'm not really sure on the exact science behind this, but we have a couple of what I'm just gonna go ahead and call nulls on either end. So all your activity is in the center, but you've got these nulls on either end of the tube. So no activity on this side and also no activity on yeah. the other end. And by the way, if you guys can't tell, obviously we're capped off on that end and we've got a speaker playing the 110 Hertz on this end. So if 110 Hertz is the resonance of this tube, we should be able to get some activity at all of the other octaves of 110 Hertz, right? So let me go ahead and dial it down to 55 real quick, because that's gonna be the lower octave of 110. So there's 55 Hertz. I need to crank the amplitude up a little bit. Well, that was clipping. Did y'all yeah. hear that, by yep. the way? Yep. That was clipping. <laughs> That was square wave. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see, only one half of the tube now is activated. So one half is activated and the other half is your null. Uh, I heard one scientist explain that as it's like a vacuum that's created, oh, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, one half of the tube is activated, the other half is not. And then as I dial frequency up, let me turn the amplitude down because it goes crazy at 110. But as I dial frequency up, you'll see things kind of change. Here, I'll give you. It's walking. 
Okay, so now we're back to 110. Turn that ampli amplitude down a little bit. So now we've got the two nulls on either end. So now, what's another octave of 110? Well, that's 220, right? And sorry if this gets a little obnoxious with the tones. <laughs> yes. But um, now that we go up to 220, wow. now we've got three nulls. And as you can see, at higher frequency, even the nodes and anti-nodes are more defined. Those are all one bead thick. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Much more defined at higher frequencies. So I'm going to go ahead and bump it on up. Let me turn it down a little bit. And then I'll bump it up to 440, because that's going to be your next octave. That's starting to hurt. Yeah, this one's the <laughs> well, most now we, annoying. Now we get enough amplitude to actually do something. Yeah. And as you can see, we've added another null. So every yeah. time you double frequency, you add another null, and your nodes and anti-nodes get a little bit more defined. There's not much difference in the definition here between 220 and 440, and I think it just has to do with the thickness of the oh the yeah, beads, the styrofoam, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Oh, I need so some pretty, plugs. <laughs> pretty cool stuff.